Hey everyone and welcome back to the videos. So right now we're going to look at the Bolt library. Bolt is a super super cool library. Um, I read the papers, I don't know if how many of you have read the papers uh, that Valve published about multiplayer networking but they're really really cool. So something I noticed years ago is that in Counter-Strike, which is a Valve game, um, if you and Half-Life, which it, it was a mod of Half-Life originally, if you uh, shot someone and you got a headshot, it would register instantly, and it was always only if you know you actually put their cursor on their head, as opposed to games of back in that time like Halo and um, Call of Duty. I think the later Call of Duties had prediction, but in Halo especially, I knew that um, my friends who played it, they'd tell me you had to lead your gun. You had to aim ahead of where they were going to run, and that's because of network lag. That's because by the time your bullet fired on the server, it was already uh, you know 50 to 100 milliseconds in the future and they were already ahead of where they were when you saw them but what Valve figured out is that you could do client-side prediction and you could also do things where like you could rewind the frame on the server and figure out what they saw back in time and Bolt is an implementation of all that inside Unity and as far as I know it's the only one that does it that at least that you can buy on the asset store. So for that reason, compared to say Photon or any of the other um, popular Unity networking libraries, um, it has some features that none of them do. So we're gonna take a look at Bolt. All you need to do, um, now this is in beta, so I grabbed um, just the, off of GitHub, the um, installer only package. Now it might come with more tutorials and whatnot otherwise. Um, but this, this is just the installer only package and we need to go to the edit menu install bolt and we're going to let it install that for us so what is bolt doing why does it need to install well um, it actually compiles its own code so it has a user dll here and that's actually um, we're going to define and this is from where it failed to load previously we're going to uh, define our own um, assets in the Bolt editor here and those will be compiled for us into code and I'll show you how that works so we need to open up all of the um, here we go the assets window and the editor window and we're going to create a new state called player state or you know what we'll just call it entity state I like that better And we'll create a new property. So um, this GUI is pretty in flux, and the state update is quite new. Um, so expect some things to change if you're using a different version. But you know the process is, I think, mostly going to stay the same. So let me just. Uh, oops, you got a little peek ahead there. Um, I've done this once before. So the first property that we need to make is the transform transform will be of type transform and uh, it's probably going to have the number one uh, priority. We're going to make a new property called speed and that'll be a float. And uh, what this is, is a state is something that can be assigned to one of your entities over the network. So if you've ever used Photon, you have a Photon view on a certain object, like the player has a Photon view. If you've ever used Unity, I think it has a, Unity networking has a network view, and uh, Entity, a Bolt Entity is the same concept, concept. But what Bolt does for you, you define that these state uh, properties, and it'll just automatically take care of replicating them across a network and serializing, deserializing, and it does it in a very efficient way. So what we do here is, um, we actually go to the bolt to assets and then compile bolt assets and that will inside our bolt user DLL create uh, some code to do with the entity state um, but for now we're just going to go over a few more before we look at that we're going to go over a few more things that you can make so command we make a new command called the player command and it has two parts to it, it has an input and it has a result. So for the input, um, we're going to make like a Diablo style or League of Legends style clicking moving controller where you click somewhere on the map 
and it finds a path and it'll just automatically follow along that path. So uh, you want to have two things. You want to have a vector 3 move direction and you want to have a rotation in the y float. So uh, how do I explain it? So Bolt has a loop that is tightly controlled between the server and the o and the controller of the entity. So the server um, the server will always be authoritative over controlling the instantiation of entities and the final say on its uh, state. So, for example, um, the player says, I want to move uh, one unit in the x direction. It'll send its moved, moved dir to be, uh, you know, one, zero, zero. And that'll tell the server that it wants to move that way. And it'll say, I want my rotation, which will be the Euler angles a Y rotation, to be a, a certain thing. And then in the result, the server will calculate the result to be what is their new position as a vector 3, and what is their new Y rotation to be a float. And um, it'll send this back, and the client will um, use those values going forward. Now it's a bit more complex than that so the entity that controls it, the client, actually uses these inputs to uh, predict its own position and rotation and then it rolls back to whatever the server last said and keeps uh, looping back through the inputs over and over again. And you're gonna see that that creates really nice and smooth client-side prediction but at the same time um, the server does have the final say on the uh, actual result. So um, I think that's all we really need to do. Um, but I am going to show you a, a little bit more of a cool feature that you can do um, as well, which is the using struct. So um, before this update that allowed structs, um, I had a lot of really a ton of properties. Like my, my entity was super flat. And structs allow you to define like things that will make uh, your entity state a little bit more of a hierarchy. Like for example, I had three stats. Like say you have health, mana, and energy or something like that. Uh, that was nine floats. Uh, two, one for current, one for max, and one for the regen rate. Now we can just roll a vital struct that says current value, max value, and uh, regen per five seconds and in our entity state we can add a new struct property of vitals call it health and then it makes it a little bit easier to roll your mana and energy and, and whatever else that you want we're gonna replicate this to controller so um, what's the difference between replicate and don't replicate um, if you if you you don't want to replicate the transform because uh, the the whole um, command thing is is handling your transform position for you. You're doing the local prediction of it, so you don't want to replicate that. But for speed, the server sets your speed and tells you what it is. It should do that. It should tell you what your health is from the server. So you need to replicate that to the controller. And let's see if we can compile this. Good, so we've compiled this. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at, at the code for it um, a little bit later, um, but for now we've gone over Bolt and we're gonna stop this video and continue on in the next video. So ciao.